Welcome to Math with Professor V. In this video, I'll be solving the exam number three, primarily on multiple integrals that I gave to my Calculus 3 class, fall 2023. So here we go and get ready. There's gonna be lots of graphing throughout the entire exam. First question, reverse the order of integration and then evaluate the integral. You must also include a labeled graph of the integration region. And so if you were to try to evaluate this double integral directly, you'd first have to integrate with respect to y, which is nightmarish <laughs> since we have one over y to the fourth plus one. So the approach to this problem is we're gonna reverse the order of integration. We want it to be dx dy instead. And that was the very generous hint that was given in the directions. So to start off figuring out how we're exactly gonna reverse the order of integration, we need to graph the integration region. Now notice here, the limits for x are from zero to eight. And I usually like to write that out. So x goes from zero to eight. And then the limits for y are from the cube root of x to two. So let's graph the integration region now just in the xy plane, right? This is only a double integral. So we're still in 2D, x, y. x goes from zero to eight and y goes from cube root of x to two. So we're gonna have an intersection right here at eight, two. Notice this is the upper bound on y. So that horizontal line is bounding y above and below cube root of x is bounding it. So something like this. So this is y equals cube root of x. And it's important you understand since cube root of x is the lower bound, the region, the integration region, is this portion here that I'm shading in, okay? If it was going to be this portion, then the limits for y would have been 0 to cube root of x, 0 to cube root of x. But since it goes cube root of x to 2, it's this portion here, okay? So now we want to reverse the order of integration, meaning I'm going to set things up. The integrand remains the same because I'm still going to stay in the Cartesian or rectangular coordinate system, but I want it to be dx dy. So whatever your outermost differential is, in this case dy, those limits for y need to be constants. I can't include any functions because we want the result from our integral to be a number, a constant. So look at the region and figure out what the bounds are for y using constants only. Y is bounded from zero to two, right? Very good, so those are the limits for Y. Next, I need to figure out what the limits are in the X direction. X direction moves horizontally, so the best advice I can give you is draw a little horizontal line segment. This is in the X direction. Wherever it hits in the region first, that's gonna be the lower bound or your lower limit for your integral. And then wherever it hits second, that's gonna be your upper bound or your upper limit for the integral. Okay, and these are limits for x. So they have to be x equals. So the lower bound is the y-axis, which is x equals zero. So this is gonna be zero. And then the upper bound is the function y equals cube root of x, but I need to rearrange and solve for x in terms of y. So that's the same as x equals y cubed. All right, very good. So then now we're gonna evaluate the integral and things are gonna work out beautifully because notice I'm integrating with respect to x first. This is a constant, right? There's no x's in it. So when I take the antiderivative, I'm just going to multiply by x. Keep writing everything, though, all along the way. So I have 0 to 2, 1 over y to the 4th plus 1 is a constant. Antiderivative is just going to be x evaluated from 0 to y cubed. And then I still have dy out here. These limits get substituted in for x, just leave this outside, minding its own business. Not all the way outside the integral, no, no, no. <laughs> so we're gonna have one over y to the fourth plus one times y cubed minus zero dy. And you know, my students, I have no problem. And if you're at this level too, just check with your instructor. Like, 
they already know if there's no x here and you're integrating with respect to x you're just going to do upper limit minus lower limit and i'm fine if they want to jump to the very next step zero to two y cubed over y to the fourth plus one dy can you see what happened maybe it was a little too quick and traumatizing you can just do upper limit minus lower limit since there were no x's here y cubed minus zero gives me y cubed all right from here oh my goodness so relaxing this is like an integral you did back in calc one right u sub time i'm gonna let u be y to the fourth plus one and then du is for y cubed dy one fourth du is y cubed dy and then we can go ahead change our limits of integration so u of zero is going to be one and then u of two is going to be two to the fourth plus one which is 17. so my new integral in terms of u is going to go from one to 17 and then one fourth du one fourth du is y cubed dy so that's one fourth du over u and then antiderivative that's just going to be one fourth natural log absolute value of u from 1 to 17 we're going to evaluate it leave the one fourth outside you can just have natural log 17 minus natural log of 1. i don't have to write absolute value anymore because there's no variables and it's i made it positive it already was positive but i kept it so and then we know natural log of one, that's zero. So final answer is one fourth natural log of 17. That's it, good? Okay, started off very calm. <laughs> Let's move on to the next problem. So it says change the Cartesian integral to an equivalent polar integral and then evaluate you must also include a labeled graph of the integration region. So again, notice this is a double integral, double integral. We're gonna graph the integration region. Currently it's in the rectangular or Cartesian coordinate system, and then we're gonna switch it to polar. So let's list out what the limits are for X and Y. So Y's limits go from zero to natural log of nine. And then x's limits go from 0 to this function here, which we're going to discuss what it is. 0 up until square root ln of 9 squared minus y squared. Now, if you've done several of these problems, then you should recognize that this is the equation of a semicircle. It'll just be the right half. And then because of the restriction on y, it's going to be just the top right fourth of it. But if that's not obvious, I'll help you right now. Okay. We know that the equation of a circle is if it's centered at the origin. So if the center is at zero, zero, then you would have x minus zero squared plus y minus zero squared equals r squared. And if I solve for x, x squared equals r squared minus y squared. And x would be plus or minus radical r squared minus y squared. Now the positive radical is the right half of the circle, and then the negative radical is the left half of the circle. And similarly, if you were to solve for y, which we more commonly have done previously in calculus, and you have plus or minus rad r squared minus x squared, the positive radical is the upper half of the circle, and the negative is the lower half. It's helpful if you can just recognize that. So that's why now I'm looking, I go, oh, this is the right half of a circle centered at zero, zero. And this natural log of nine, that's the radius. Radius is ln of nine. And don't let it freak you out. It's gonna be totally fine. Let's graph it. You can just label your axes and say, this is ln of nine. You don't need to actually know what number it is, okay? So here's my y-axis, here's the x-axis. And first I'm gonna start off, let's graph the whole right half of the circle. Radius is ln of nine. Okay, not that serious. 
And then I'm looking over here, since y is bounded between 0 and ln of 9, 0 up to ln of 9 is just going to be this quarter. Okay, one-fourth of the circle. So now I need to switch to polar coordinates. I need to work in terms of r and theta. So let's figure out what my new limits are going to be to bound this region. So the radius r, to figure out the limits on r, start at the origin and draw a ray extending out through the region. Where it starts is the lower limit, where it stops is the upper limit. So this is the lower limit, this would be the upper limit. So r goes from, that's right, 0 to natural log of 9. Then I need limits on theta. You're just going to start at theta equals 0 on the positive x-axis and see what we have to sweep out to cover the region. Theta is going to go all the way from 0 to pi over 2. That should be pretty obvious because we're just in quadrant 1. Okay. And then the only other thing we need to fix is the fact that the function that we're integrating is still written in terms of Cartesian coordinates. But I know rad x squared plus y squared and polar, that's rad r squared, so just r. So let's rewrite our integral now. And I mean, 99% of the time you have theta on the very outside. So we're going to go 0 to pi over 2. r is going to go 0 to natural log of 9. The integrand now becomes, oops, I wanted a highlighter, come to me, e to the r, yes? Good, e to the r. And then remember, when I switch to polar, dx dy gets replaced with r dr d theta. You have to remember to add that extra r. All right, now notice here, I can break this up into a product of two single variable integrals. Why do I say that? Because all my limits of integration are constants and I have a product of a function of r and a function of theta. There is no theta. So this is what I can do next. I can write this as 0 to pi over 2 d theta times integral 0 to ln of 9 r e to the r dr. This is totally legal. And then perhaps now you've already realized, well, antiderivative is just going to be theta from 0 to pi over 2. So all I'm going to do is end up multiplying by pi over 2 like this. And then you have 0 to ln of 9, r, e to the r, dr. And my students have gotten so accustomed to this that anytime they see d theta, they see the limits. And there's no thetas here. You can just do upper minus lower and multiply by it on the outside. I'm totally fine with that time-saving shortcut. Okay, now let's look here. r times e to the r, I need to use integration by parts. So let's go ahead, choose u and dv. I want u to be r. dv should be e to the r dr. And then du is dr and v is e to the r. So I can rewrite this now. It's pi over 2 times we're going to have r e to the r, r e to the r, that's evaluated from 0 to natural log of 9, minus integral 0 to natural log of 9, and then it's du times v, which is just e to the r dr. I'm going to evaluate everything at the limits of the last step, okay? So we're going to have here pi over 2 times r e to the r, minus antiderivative of e to the r is just e to the r from 0 to ln of 9. Good? Okay, perfect. Let me get rid of this page number just so I can write down below. So now we're going to leave the pi over 2 outside. I have natural log of 9 times e to the natural log of 9 minus e to the natural log of 9 Minus, now if I plug in 0, that's going to be 0 plus e to the 0. Let's go through term by term. This will cancel. So this is just 9 ln of 9 minus 9 minus 0 plus 1. So final answer, the way I would leave it, is pi over 2 outside. You have 9 natural log of 9 minus 8. That's it.
Okay, and obviously if you're very comfortable with your integration techniques, go through faster. I'm just kind of going at a moderate pace to remind you of, you know, integration by parts and whatnot. I'm not going as slowly as I would for a Calc 2 class though. Okay, very good. Let's look at another example. Find the area of the region specified in polar coordinates. You must also include a labeled graph of the region. So we want the region inside r equals 14 sine theta and outside r equals 7. In Calc 2, the formula that we use for area involves a double integral dA. And there's no function. There's no function. If I added a function, then it would represent a volume. Okay. So let's go ahead. Let's graph the region. Let's figure out the intersection first, and then we'll set up our integral. So we have 14 sine theta. I already know that's a circle centered on the y-axis and the radius is seven. So the center is gonna be at zero seven. And then r equals seven, that's also a circle. It's centered at zero, zero, and the radius is seven, radius is seven. You should probably have memorized just the basic polar curves because they come up so much. So if r equals 2a sine theta, that's a circle centered on the y-axis, radius is a. And if you have 2a cosine theta, then it's a circle centered on the x-axis. It's very helpful. First thing, like I said, let's find the intersection for these two circles. So 14 sine theta equals 7. That means sine theta is a half. So that happens when theta is pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. So that's where these two circles are going to intersect. So let's get a graph going. We need the graph. That way we can figure out what the limits of integration should be for theta and for r. So here's x, here's y. Um, let me draw two circles. And they should be the same size, right? They both have the same radius. They're just centered in different places. Okay, there's one. And then here's the other one. Yay. Okay. So this one up here that's centered at 7, 0, this is r equals 14 sine theta. And then this is r equals 7. And then the intersection occurs. This is at theta equals pi over 6. And this is at theta equals 5 pi over 6. And then read the problem carefully. Inside this circle, 14 sine theta, and outside r equals 7. So that would be this region right here. Okay. Good, 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 good. So now let's figure out our limits of integration for theta and for r. Theta hopefully is obvious. When we found the intersection that gave it to us, the region lives or is bounded by pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6. So that should be clear, pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6. Now, oh my god, that's for theta. Why did I put it for r? Up here. Now for r, it's a little more tricky, but you guys are fine, okay? Remember I told you start at the origin and just draw a ray extending outward. Where it hits first in the region is the lower bound, where it hits second is the upper bound. So first it hit this curve, this circle, which is r equals 7. So that's my lower bound. And then where did it hit second? 14 sine theta. So that's the upper bound. 14 sine theta. Good? Okay, so those are our limits of integration. So the area of the region, I'm going to put theta on the very outside. You have to have the constant limits on the very outside. You can't do r on the outside because then you would have 14 sine theta up here and your answer wouldn't be a constant. It wouldn't give you the area. Okay, then this is going to go 7 to 14 sine theta. No function, I just need dA. And in polar, dA is r dr d theta. Good? Okay, so we're going to have pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6. Antiderivative of r with respect to r is 1 half r squared. 
and this gets evaluated from 7 to 14 sine theta d theta. I'm going to take the 1 half outside. Is that okay with you? Oh, good. Then we have pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6. 14 squared, that's 196. Sine squared theta minus 49 d theta. As soon as I see sine squared theta, I know I'm going to replace it, right, with my half angle, 1 half times 1 minus cosine 2 theta. And then I have this 196 times 1 half. So what's that? 196 times 1 half. Yes, that's 98. So let's rewrite everything thus far. So we have 1 half sitting outside pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6, and then that's going to be 98 minus 98 cosine 2 theta minus 49 d theta. And then this 98 minus 49, that just gives me 49, good, minus 98 cosine 2 theta. I don't feel like rewriting the whole thing if you'll allow me that. So let's just go ahead and integrate now. We're going to have 1 half, antiderivative of 49 would be 49 theta, minus, antiderivative here would be negative 98, but divided by 2 sine 2 theta. So it'll become minus 49 sine 2 theta from pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6. And then what I would really recommend to make life nice is take this 49 outside the integral with the 1 half. So when you're plugging in your limits of integration, you can just really focus on simpler numbers. So 49 over 2 times theta is 5 pi over 6 minus, this is going to be sine of 2 times 5 pi over 6. So that's sine of 5 pi over 3. So that's going to be in quadrant 4. No. 5 pi over 3? Yes, that's correct. <laughs> so what is that going to be? That's going to be negative, won't it? Yes. 2 times 5 pi over 6 is 10 pi over 6, which is 5 pi over 3. Good. So minus, oh, neg that's why I got all jumbled up. Negative rot 3 over 2. And then I have minus, next limit is pi over 6 plus sine of 2 pi over 6 is sine of pi over 3, which is rad 3 over 2. Okay. I had a panic attack. I was looking at my notes, and I had a plus here because I already combined the two negatives, and I was looking back right now thinking, what in the world was I doing? I was skipping steps, and I confused myself. Okay, so I think we should be good from here. We just have to combine some like terms. So this is 49 over 2. What do we have here? Plus rad 3 over 2, plus rad 3 over 2, that's just going to be rad 3. And then here, 5 pi over 6 minus pi over 6, that's 4 pi over 6, which is 2 pi over 3. Okay, do we care to clean it up more? Um, I leave it up to you. If you want to distribute just the half part through, you could. So you could have 49 out here. And then that would be rad 3 over 2 plus pi over 3. Does that look any better to you? I think they they both look about the same to me. I don't know. I don't care. So some students, they stopped here, 100%. Some students stopped here, 100%. Okay, just, I don't know. You can argue both. How was that one? Good. Excellent. Okay, let's move on. In the next one, all you need to do is set up the iterated integral for evaluating triple integral of f, and the order is dz dr d theta over the given region d. Never mind the r's in the middle. You can move that around. The order is dz dr d theta. You must also include a labeled graph of the integration region. So for this problem, they only need to set it up. They don't actually have to evaluate the integral. So the region D is the right circular cylinder 
whose base is the circle r equals 6 sine theta in the xy plane and whose top lies in the plane z equals 8 minus y. So I'm going to graph the base region and then I will graph the 3D um, integration region D. Okay, first let me draw the base of D. The base is the circle R equals 6 sine theta. So remember we said this is a circle centered on the y-axis whose radius is 3. So the center would be at 0, 3. Let us graph it just so you get an idea what the base of this 3D region is going to be. We have circle right here, boom, and the radius is 3. Okay, that's the base. Now I'm going to draw the 3D circular cylinder. The top is the plane Z equals 8 minus Y. So here's what's going to happen. First, let's draw our circular base. Here's six, okay? And so it's gonna come out here, here. There's the base, okay? Now, normally it would just keep extending upward. If you had a right circular cylinder, it would be like this. However, the top is the plane z equals 8 minus y. So say this is 8, right? This is, excuse me, I didn't label x, y, z. z equals 8 minus y. If y is 0, x is 0, z is equal to 8. Yes? And then if y is 8, z is 0. So over here, if y is 8, z is 0. So what's going to happen is this plane comes through and it's going to slice off that chunky top of the cylinder. All of this gets cut off. This is now the top. Can you imagine what it's going to look like if you took like a little bird's eye view? It's going to look like an ellipse if you're peeking down at it. Let me erase the excess. Yeah. And then this little piece here also, I shouldn't include. That's just the plane slicing down, but the base region determines how far it's going to come. So like from the top, if you're looking down, you're going to see like a sloping ellipse. Yes. And then these are the, this is the side. This is the side of it. Okay. And then the base, if you were to look down plane view on the XY plane, then you see your circular base. Okay, so this is D. This is D. Perfect. So we're going to set up our limits of integration. Z is going to be the innermost integral. Okay, and on the outside is dr and d theta. We don't even have the function. It doesn't matter. F of r theta z. And then you have, you can put r, dz, dr, d theta. Okay, so for the outer two limits, theta and r, you're going to look here at the 2D graph in the xy plane. Okay, so the base region, look at the limits. Theta goes from 0 to pi. Can you see that? 0 to pi, not 0 to 2 pi, because see where the circle lives? Only in quadrant 1 and 2. So theta is going to go from 0 to pi. r is going to go from 0 to What's the equation of the circle? 6 sine theta. So r goes from 0 to 6 sine theta. Okay? And then lastly, we have limits for z over here. Same thing. Go from the bottom up in the z direction. Okay? What bounds the region on the bottom? z equals 0. What bounds the solid on the top? z equals 8 minus y but we're in cylindrical coordinates so instead of y i'm going to write r sine theta Whew, okay we good so let's set her up and then that's it so outermost theta is zero to pi then i'm going to have r zero to six sine theta then i'm going to have z limits zero to eight minus r sine theta 
f of r theta z r dz dr d theta that's it i just wanted them to set it up and graph okay good <laughs> Let's look at another one here. Example, I'm not, I'm, saying, I'm calling them examples. These were test questions. All right, question five. Use a spherical coordinate integral to find the volume of the given solid. You must also include a labeled graph of the solid. So we have the solid bounded below by the sphere, rho equals nine cosine phi. Sorry if the font looks a little funky. I'll rewrite it. Nine cosine phi. And then above by the cone, z equals rad x squared plus y squared. So the problem told us we need to work in the spherical coordinate system. You should be pretty familiar with the cone z equals rad x squared plus y squared. Its equation is phi equals pi over 4. In case that doesn't come to you in like a hot second, let me just show you. So we know in spherical coordinates, let me rewrite this, z equals rad x squared plus y squared, z is equal to rho cosine phi, and then rad x squared plus y squared. First, let's take a pit stop in polar land or cylindrical land, that's r, but then we know r is rho sine phi, yes? Fabulous. And then the rows cancel, so then you say to yourself, hey, when is cosine phi equal to sine phi? And remember, phi is bounded between 0 and pi, not 2 pi. 0 pi. So it has to be at pi over 4. Okay, and that, that cone comes up so much, you know. Usually my students end up memorizing it within like a week or so. Anyways, so we have the equation of that cone. Now this sphere here, if you've graphed quite a bit in spherical, then you'll probably know, oh, it's centered on the z-axis. The radius of the sphere is 9 halves, and the center is at 0, 0, 9 halves. If that's not super obvious to you, that's fine. I'll show you how to work through. We're going to rewrite the equation of the sphere first in the rectangular coordinate system, okay? And then I'll just show you a shortcut. So you have rho equals 9 cosine phi. To go back to rectangular coordinates, let's multiply both sides by another rho. So then you have rho squared equals 9 rho cosine phi. And then rho squared, well, that's x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals, on the right-hand side, now I have 9z, right? Rho cosine phi is z. I can move the 9z over. And then if I want to complete the square, well, negative 9 divided by 2 square it. That's what I would add to both sides. So plus 81 over 4, plus 81 over 4. And then basically I have x squared plus y squared plus z minus 9 halves squared equals 9 halves squared. So the sphere, it's centered at 0, 0, 9 halves, and the radius is 9 halves. So there's a shortcut. If you have the equation, look, you probably could have figured it out rho equals, let me call it 2a cosine phi, okay? Then the center is going to be on the z-axis at 0, 0, a, and the radius is a. And that'll just save you some time, okay? If it's centered at the origin, then what would be different is you wouldn't see cosine phi in the equation, if you just had rho equals 9, that's when it's centered at the origin, okay? And then whatever rho is, that's actually the radius, okay? Very good, very good. Okay, so we've got that under control. We're going to graph it now and show what the region is that we're trying to find the volume of. So here's my coordinate system, x, here's z, here's y. I'm going to go up to 9, and then let me get my sphere going first, and then I can kind of work the cone into the appropriate places. So now let me say, mm, this is 9 halves. That looks like about where the center is. And then adding some dimension, like we do. Now, since the, okay, now since the cone is coming through at pi over 4, right, 
This pi over four we measure from the positive z-axis. All right, all the way down. So it's gonna swoop out pi over four. If you think about it though, like this point here would, would be at nine halves. And then over here, the trace of the sphere in the xy plane, that would be at nine halves. So the, the cone's gonna come hit it right there. Okay, so let's just draw a wee bit of cone. I'm not gonna keep extending it. And then let's read the problem carefully, make sure we shade the correct region. You can imagine the cone, the cone sweeping all around. I just don't wanna make this picture too messy. The solid is bounded below by the sphere, so the sphere is on the bottom of the solid, and above by the cone, so the cone's on the top. So it's this part out here. It's this little outer area. And even though I'm just shading like those two little pieces, it does come all the way around and all the way around the back, okay? Does that make sense? I don't wanna shade this, because then you're gonna think that inside part's included, and it's not, but it's like that outer layer. All right, that's spinning around. Good. So now we're going to come up with what the limits should be for theta, phi, and rho. And then we're going to set up our triple integral because we're trying to figure out the volume of this solid. So remember, if you're doing a volume, then you're going to have a triple integral, no function. It's just going to be dv. All right. So here we go. What about theta? What should the limits for theta be? Well, theta, we're going to go all the way from 0 to 2 pi because we're, we have uh, the volume or the solid existing all the way around the sphere. So that's 0 to 2 pi. Now, what about the limits for phi? Well, be careful. There's none of the solid from 0 up until pi over 4. This is all scooped out. Nothing from 0 to pi over 4. The cone is the upper bound of the solid. Let me draw it in a little more assertively, okay? That's pi over four. The cone is where the solid starts and the solid keeps going, 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 going until it hits the bottom of the sphere, which is right here. Well, in terms of phi, that's pi over two. So we're gonna go pi over four to pi over two. And then lastly, what about rho? What are the limits for rho? So you start at the origin, draw a ray going outwards until you hit the end of the solid. Origin to end of the solid. Origin to end of the solid. Where it starts, the origin, that's your lower limit, that's zero, up until end of the solid. Who were we hitting every single time? We were hitting the sphere. So the sphere is the upper bound on rho. And the sphere's equation is very good. 9 cosine phi, okay? All right, so let's set her up. Here we go. Volume is going to be integral. Do theta last like 99% of the time? 0 to 2 pi. Then phi, we have pi over 4 to pi over 2. Rho goes 0, 9 cosine phi. And then do you remember what dv is in spherical? Oh, good. Rho squared sine phi, d rho, d phi, d theta. Okay, now from here, let's see. I'm just going to go ahead, take some shortcuts, okay? Please don't be traumatized. Um, here's d theta. There's no thetas anywhere. So if I were to break this up, I'm just going to pick up a 0 to 2 pi d theta, which is going to give me 2 pi. So let's do that. 2 pi. Then we have pi over 4 to pi over 2. Next, I'm going to integrate with respect to rho. I've got rho squared. So that's going to become 1 third rho cubed. Well, let's just put the 3 from the 1 third out there. I'm going to move sine phi over here. I just integrated with respect to rho, oops, and it should be cubed now, please excuse me, from 0 to 9 cosine phi, and then all that I have left now afterwards is the d phi, okay? If that was too wild for you, my apologies, but I want to get this show on the road. So d theta, 0 to 2 pi gave me this 2 pi, okay? Everything else is color-coded. 
So moving on, this is two pi over three integral pi over four to pi over two. Then we have sine phi times, and then if this is rho cubed, that's gonna be nine cubed cosine cubed phi minus zero d phi. Okay, again, why don't we just take that nine cubed outside? It's traumatizing everybody, I'm sure. So nine cubed times two pi over three. Then the integral goes from pi over four to pi over two. And then I have cosine cubed phi, sine phi, d phi. And then this is just an easy peasy u sub, hopefully. I want sine, th sine phi d phi, the odd man out, to be my du. So let's go ahead. I want that to be du, basically. So u is cosine phi. And then du is, it's fine if it's negative. We can deal with that sine phi d phi. Okay. And then let's see here, Ooh. we're gonna have nine cubed times two pi over three. I had it worked out earlier, but I wanna make sure I didn't do anything wrong. Times two divided by three, yes, 486 pi, 486 pi. And then be careful with your limits of integration. So cosine cubed phi is now u cubed sine phi d phi is negative du, so we could put the negative out here. And then we gotta change our limits of integration. So cosine of pi over four, that's one over rad two. And then cosine of the upper limit, pi over two, that's zero. But what I recommend doing is, you see how we have that negative sitting outside our integral. Well, why don't I go ahead and flip the limits of integration and I'll make it positive. So we have 486 pi, this is gonna go now from zero to one over rad two, u cubed du. Okay, almost done. So then we have 486 pi. Antiderivative of u cubed is gonna be u to the fourth over four. Let me just put the over four out here. You know what I mean? And then we have u to the fourth evaluated from zero to one over rad two. One over rad two to the fourth is gonna be one half squared. So one fourth. So then I have 486 pi over four times one fourth. And then that will reduce. And our final answer at long last is 243 pi over eight. Okay, there you go. Oh, that's such an ugly looking too. Hold on. Better, better. How are we doing? Good. Now. I know I say phi. Um, some people in the in the U.S. they say phi. Um, in Greek, I believe it's phi. And when I was in university, most of my math professors were not American. They were European. They were foreign. They were Asian. They were from all over. So they said phi, which I trust more because I feel like they would pronounce it using vowels that are more akin to how it really is. In the Greek alphabet. So that's what I say. But if you look it up, phi, phi, you can say either. I'm just saying what I was, what I heard nonstop <laughs> when I was in college. Okay. All right. Very good. Plus I'd rather pronounce it more closely to how the Greek alphabet pronounces it. Right. Good. Next problem. Let D be the region that is bounded below by the cone. Phi equals pi over four. Oh, we know that cone so well. Okay. And above by the sphere, rho equals six. Ooh, remember I told you when it's just rho equals, you know that that sphere is centered at the origin. Very good. And then the radius is just six. Perfect. Set up. So only set it up. Just set it up. The triple integral for the volume of D in spherical coordinates, you must include a labeled sketch of the solid. Okay, very nice. So, I think we got this. This time, this time, our sphere is centered at the origin. The radius is six. And we have the same good old cone, pi over four, coming to cut it through. Okay, so here's six, six, 
6, 6, negative 6, and you know, as much as I love technology, sometimes graphing just on good old pencil and paper is a, ever so barely easier. I just feel like I can kind of angle things better, I can do shading a little more easily. But, you know, I will continue to practice. Oh, look at what, what a deformed looking sphere. Oh, well. Oy. Are we just going to let it go? Are we going to say Professor V enough is enough? We get the idea. Okay. Then the cone, pi over 4, is coming through. We could find the intersection if we care. Do we care? I think we're good. You're just going to draw it sweeping out sweeping out you tell the people so here's the cute little cone oh fabulous and you tell them this much right here is pi over four great now let's make sure we shade the correct region it's bounded below by the cone and above by the sphere so the cone is the lower bound of the region and the sphere is the upper bound so we get the ice cream cone Ooh, see cute little ice cream cone here okay so we're going to just set up a triple integral in spherical coordinates for the volume. So we're not actually going to integrate it. Okay. So let's figure out what should the limits for theta be. We'll look down at the xy plane. The solid exists all the way around. If you were just looking at the xy plane, it's in all four quadrants, right? It's also above and below in the z direction, but that's fine. So theta is going to go all the way from 0 to 2 pi. And then what about phi? So this is different than the last problem we did. The solid does start up here at the positive z-axis. It's As soon as phi is zero, the solid's existing all the way up until we hit the end of the cone at pi over four. So the limits should go zero to pi over four. And then rho, okay, so start at the origin, draw a ray outwards, or just a little line segment, you know, till you hit the end of the, vol of the solid hit the end of the solid. Who's determining the upper limit? It's the, it's the sphere. And the sphere's equation is rho equals 6. So the limits for rho are 0 to 6. Okay, so that's it. So volume's going to be 0 to 2 pi, 0 to pi over 4, 0 to 6, rho squared, sine phi, d rho, d phi, d theta. That one was too easy. Why did I put that on there? Okay. I must have just been feeling bad for them. Um, okay, moving on. Number seven. Let D be the smaller cap cut from a solid ball of radius five units by a plane two units from the center of the sphere. Set up the triple integral for the volume of D in cylindrical coordinates. You must also include a labeled sketch of the solid. Okay, so if we have a solid ball of radius five units, and it's basically, we're gonna put it centered at the origin, okay? And then this problem also told me we're working in cylindrical, cylindrical, okay? Let's start there. So if we had a sphere and we were in rectangular, it would be x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals the radius squared. Good. But we are going to, yes, cylindrical. So x squared plus y squared is going to be replaced with r squared plus z squared equals 5 squared. So this is my sphere or the solid ball, okay? And then it's being cut by a plane that's two units from the center of the sphere. So let me draw for you what's going on. That way you can see how we can find the intersection of this sphere with our solid ball. With the plane, excuse me. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to draw the solid ball, our sphere, and then I'm going to draw that plane that it's describing that's two units from the center that cuts it. OK. 
okay? Now there's, there's obviously more down here, but it's not relevant to the problem because we're cutting off the top hat. D is this smaller cap. So the plane is two units from the center of the sphere. The center of the sphere is right there. Two units above it would be right here. So we have a plane. Let me see if I can draw it nicely. That's coming through and cutting it right there. Okay, pretend that's two units up from the xy plane. What would the equation of this plane be? Z equals two. Okay, and you can imagine too, like if it cuts, it's kind of making like a little cut all the way around, like so. Very good. So that plane at Z equals two, I wanna know what the intersection is with this sphere. So I'm gonna substitute in Z equals two. So this will be two squared equals 25 plus r squared. So r squared equals 21. Well, why is that important? Because I'm going to set up the triple integral in cylindrical coordinates. So it's important to know that the radius at that intersection is rad 21. Okay, let's shade in the solid. I didn't do that either. Here's the smaller cap. It's being cut. Okay, good. I don't know why it looks so tilty, but whatever. So that z equals 2 should be parallel to the xy plane. Okay, let's figure out what our limits should be then for theta, r, and z, since we're in cylindrical. So theta, let's think about it. Looking down at the xy plane, we're going all the way around. So theta should go from 0 to 2 pi. That's fine. And then what about r? Again, I just kind of look down at the xy plane. So r would go from 0 to rad 21. If you have a hard time, what I tell some of my students is you can just draw the projection of the solid over the xy plane if that helps you. Right? And so if you're looking down at the solid, basically you have that circle right here, right, where the plane intersects the sphere. And this radius is rad 21. So that's why r goes from 0 to rad 21. And then you can see theta. Yeah, for sure, theta goes all the way from 0 to 2 pi. Okay. Lastly, we need z. So same approach as before. Draw yourself a little. You can draw a ray or a line segment going up in the positive z direction. Where it hits first is the lower bound. Where it hits second is the upper bound. So where is it hitting first? It's hitting the plane first. The plane's equation in terms of z is z equals two. And what's it hitting second? It's hitting the sphere. What's the sphere's equation in cylindrical coordinates? Well, I have the sphere's equation right here. Let me solve for z. So z squared is 25 minus r squared. Z equals plus or minus rad 25 minus r squared, but we're only taking the upper half right now. That's where it's intersecting, so positive rad 25 minus r squared. So that ray trick will work all the time in any coordinate system. Whenever you're trying to figure out the limits for z per se, you draw it in the positive z direction where z is increasing, where it hits first is the lower bound, lower limit, where it hits second is the upper limit. Okay. Um, so now we need our triple integral. V is going to go 0 to 2 pi, 0 to rad 21, 2 to rad 25 minus r squared. And then what's dv in cylindrical? Do you remember? Good. r dz dr d theta. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. Here's a few more. And they just have to set that one up. That's it. Set up, again, a triple integral to find the volume of the indicated region. You must include a labeled sketch of the integration region, 2D and 3D. Do not evaluate the integral. So it's the region bounded below by the xy plane, laterally by the cylinder r equals 2 cosine theta, and above by the plane z equals 7. 
Okay, I'm going to first draw in the XY plane what's going on, and then we'll project it 3D. So the XY plane is bounding the solid below. Laterally, it's bounded by the cylinder R equals 2 cosine theta. Hopefully you remember, and I mentioned earlier, this is a circle centered on the x-axis. The radius is 1. This is always 2 times the radius. So that means it's centered at 1, 1 comma 0, basically, right? For in the xy plane. So I have this circle. Perfect, perfect. And that's bounding the solid laterally. So like on the sides, all the way around. Then the bottom is bounded by the xy plane and the top is bounded by the plane z equals seven. So now let's put it all together here. I think having the 2D graph first kind of makes this more manageable. I'm just gonna draw that same circle in the xy plane, okay? So here's x. Here's y, here's z, here's one, here's two, okay? Okay, let me try to draw that circle now in the xy plane. Ooh, ooh, I think this is gonna be okay. When I tell you I'm better with pencil and paper, sometimes technology makes things trickier. Okay, oh my God, we'll take it. We'll take it. This is at z equals 7. Got it? Great. So this is the same circle in the xy plane that we graphed right over here. Okay. And then here's the top. The top of the cylinder is determined by the plane z equals 7. And then laterally, you know, the sides are determined here, up and down, okay? When you project this circle upwards, it's a cylinder. So when they say a cylinder, it's because this circle gets projected upwards in the z direction. In just the xy plane, it's a circle. Okay, we need a triple integral to find the volume and we're doing it in which coordinate system? They didn't say, but since we're dealing with a cylinder, cylindrical is usually the easiest. So. Since we get to pick, I'm picking cylindrical. So I need the limits for theta and then r and z. So for theta and r, look at your 2D graph. Very helpful. Theta goes from, no, not 0 to 2 pi. No, no, no. From negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Look at where this lives. It's not living over here in quadrants three and 2 and 3. It's living only in 1 and 4. So theta goes from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Dangerous, I know. What about r? Again, stick to the 2D picture. Go from the center out. Go from the center out. Where it hits first is your lower limit. Where it hits second is your upper limit. It's going from 0 to the equation of that circle, which is 2 cosine theta. And lastly, what about z? Now look at the 3D picture. This should be straightforward. Z goes from 0 to 7, 0 to 7, 0 to 7. Good? Great. Okay, so let's set up our integral. Just setting it up. Negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. 0 to 2 cosine theta. 0 to 7, r, dz, dr, d theta. Whew! Okay. They get a break from graphing for a little bit. My little angels. This is one of the best classes I've ever taught. Use the given transformation to evaluate the integral. X equals 4U, Y equals 2V, Z equals 3W, triple integral over R of X squared over 16 plus Y squared over 4 plus Z squared over 9 to the pi DX, DY, DZ, where R is the interior of the ellipsoid. So, they told us what transformation to use. Let me go ahead and figure out what the new region would be after applying the transformation. Yes? So they told me x is 4u. So I'd have 4u squared over 16 plus y is 2v squared.
squared over 4 plus z is 3w squared over 9 equals 1. And then you can see all the constants are going to cancel out. So I just end up with u squared plus v squared plus w squared equals 1. So this is a sphere centered at the origin of the UVW coordinate system. So let me just go ahead and use spherical coordinates, right? Radius is one. I'll write the word radius so you don't get confused. Radius is one. Okay, so now let me go ahead, figure out the Jacobian. Del X, Y, Z del u, v, w, and this one's actually pretty easy. I took pity on their poor souls. So partial derivative of x with respect to u is four. Partial of x with respect to v, zero. Partial of x with respect to w, zero. Next, I need partial of y with respect to u, zero. Partial of y with respect to v, two. Partial of y with respect to w, zero. And then the last row, good, zero, zero, three. And then when you have a matrix and it's fully diagonalized to get the determinant, you just multiply along the diagonal. So four times two times three, that's 24. So that's my Jacobian. Good? Perfect. So this is the new region that we're integrating over, if you wanna call it D. So let's figure out what the limits should be in spherical. For theta, we want the whole sphere, the whole stinking sphere. So it's going to go 0 to 2 pi. Phi, 0 to pi. Rho, 0 to 1. Sometimes you do need to draw the new region, but in this case, it was so super straightforward, and I didn't say it in the directions. I didn't need a picture of a, I don't need a sphere centered at the origin with radius 1. We're good. We can all move on with our lives. Okay, so here we go. We have now... Jacobian of 24, integral goes 0 to 2 pi, 0 to pi, 0 to 1. Now watch out. All of this inside here, right, after we applied the change of variables, u squared plus v squared plus w squared, in this is like currently some new rectangular coordinate system, right, instead of x, y, z. But we're going spherical, so this is all rho squared equals 1. So inside here, this is rho squared raised to the pi. Do you see that? Ooh, a little spicy from Professor V, I know. Then spherical, we still have our usual dV. So rho squared sine phi d rho d phi d theta, okay? I don't see any thetas, so I'm just gonna multiply by two pi. So this is now 48 pi, zero to pi, zero to one, I can clean this up. This is rho to the 2 pi plus 2 sine phi d rho d phi. Okay. And then you see how um, all the limits are constants. So I can break this up into a product of two single variable integrals. So I can go 0 to pi sine phi d phi and then have 0 to 1 rho to the 2 pi plus 2 d rho. Do you see that? It's kind of relaxing. OK. So what's this going to be? 48 pi antiderivative of sine phi is negative cosine phi. I don't want a negative in there. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to switch the limits and put the 0 here and the pi here. Yes. And then antiderivative of rho to the 2 pi plus 2 is going to be rho to the 2 pi plus 3. I need to divide by 2 pi plus 3, but I'm going to do that out here. And then we're going to go 0 to 1. Okay. So what is this? 48 pi over 2 pi plus 3. Cosine of 0, that's 1, minus cosine of pi negative 1. 1 raised to anything that's constant, <laughs> that's finite, I mean, is just 1 minus 0. So nothing interesting there. This is 2. So 2 times 48 pi, that's 96 pi over 2 pi plus 3.
if you you know need to go a little more slowly if you don't like me taking out the constants so quickly and aggressively that's fine it's just at this level you want to just work through integrals with a little more speed so that's the, those are the techniques i show my students in class so i'm solving these at a calc 3 level i'm not like holding your guys hand okay last question evaluate the following triple integral by transforming two cylindrical or spherical coordinates and then you must include a labeled graph of the integration region so the integration region is going to be a yep yeah, three-dimensional integration region that's correct so i didn't tell them which one to go to um let's figure out what makes the most sense so looking at the integral right now the limits for x go from negative 7 to 7 the limits for y negative rad 49 minus x squared to positive rad 49 minus x squared and then z we'll deal with later okay let me just draw in the xy plane what the heck is going on do you already recognize it yes it's just a full circle full circle radius seven perfect i already showed you earlier right when we solve for part of the circle in terms of x or in terms of y so there we go let me label this is at seven this is at seven and it's the whole thing, right? Because x is going from negative 7 to 7, and then from the negative radical to the positive radical in the y direction, it's the whole stinking circle. Okay, and then right now, z is going from rad x squared plus y squared. Oh, that's a cone. We know that. Up until z equals 7. That's just a plane, z equals 7. So let me draw it in three-dimensional coordinates now we know what the base looks like right x y z i'm gonna draw the cone i'm gonna draw the cone so i'll say this is at seven this is the plane that cuts the top of the cone right here i'm not going to draw the whole plane i'm just going to show that the cone gets cut off at the top Okay, and then the sides are also included. And then, aha, uh -huh, see, if you project the top of the solid down in the xy plane, well, there's that lovely little circle that we just graphed a second ago. Got it? Okay, I think it makes the most sense to just stay um, and go to cylindrical coordinates, not spherical. Because this cone, I can write really easily in cylindrical it's just z equals r right so let's do that i know it's it's phi and in spherical but the top z equals seven is not so fun to write in spherical so i would i would say let's go to cylindrical especially because we're going to actually oh we have to solve it we have to finish this one okay so my decision is going to cylindrical um to get limits for theta and r look at your 2d graph Theta, it's going all the way around, all the way around. So 0 to 2 pi. R, go from the center out, center out. It's going from 0 to 7. Very good. 0 to 7. And then Z, this is when you look at the 3D graph now. Boom. Where does it hit first? The cone. Where does it hit second? The plane. Z equals 7. So it's going from cone to the plane, cone to the plane. Cone is R, the plane is 7. Very, very good. Okay, so we have... It's a volume. They didn't say what it was, but okay, whatever. 0 to 2 pi, 0 to 7, R to 7, and in cylindrical, dV is R, dz, dr, d theta. I don't see any theta, so let's just do 2 pi, and then 0 to 7. You know what? Let's just get this show on the road. I'm going to integrate with respect to z. There are no z's, so I'm just going to pick one up. R, here's my z. I'm going to evaluate it from r to z, and then I still have dr. r to 7, excuse me. Why did I say z? And then we have 2 pi, integral 0 to 7, 
r times 7 minus r. Right, these get plugged in for z, 7 minus r, dr. Okay, we're doing great. 2 pi, integral 0 to 7, 7 r minus r squared, dr. 2 pi times, what is this, 7 halves r squared, minus 1 third r cubed from 0 to 7. So this is 2 pi times, so if I plug in 7 for r, 7 squared times another 7 gives me 7 cubed over 2 minus, I have 7 cubed over 3. The lower limit 0 is not going to do anything. And then I can factor out a 7 cubed, right, from both of these. So then I have 2 pi times 7 cubed times 1 half minus 1 third. So what is that going to be? 1 sixth? 3 minus 2 over 6? Yeah. So 2 pi times 7 cubed over 6. This will cancel. This is a 3. 7 cubed is one of my favorite numbers of all time. 343 pi over 3. And look, we didn't need a calculator besides the one we were born with. Look at that. You, you know, I just love 7 cubed is 343. To me, it's like so satisfying because you see how this is just a lovely 7 sandwich. 3 plus 4 is 7. 3 plus 4 is 7. It just, I don't know. It's aesthetically pleasing to me. It makes sense. I love it. One of my favorite things out there. Okay. So, that concludes the exam. I did give them a little bit of an extra credit problem. Shall we do it? Or maybe I'll save it for another video. Okay, I'll stop here. If you want to try it on your own, go ahead. Let D be the region bounded below by the XY plane, above by the sphere, X squared plus Y squared plus Z squared is 36, and on the sides by the cylinder, X squared plus Y squared equals 9. Set up the triple integral, so just set it up, in cylindrical coordinates that gives the volume of D, this is where it got spicy, using the order of integration dr dz d theta. What? Why not dz dr d theta? Because it's extra credit. I wanted them to think. And then you must include a labeled sketch of the solid. So if you want to try it, go ahead. I'll probably, I'll just record this one by itself later. I have to get ready for ballet, you guys. So I'm off. Give the video a thumbs up if you found it helpful. This was exam three for Calc 3 last fall. There was that one in the middle that was way too easy. What was I doing? Anyways, if you need more help with Calc 3, I have video lectures for every topic covered in that class, along with video lectures for Calc 1 and 2, whatever else you might need to review. Subscribe if you haven't already, and please follow me on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Math with Professor V. I love you all, and I'll be back sooner than later. Bye!